Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Laura Dillon, and I am the founder of Holistic Life Community. I am a shamanic energy healer, and we at Holistic Life Community, we are a resource for people to find out about alternative modalities that exist that have truly changed people's lives. And joining me today is Christoph Leroy, that I'm so excited to have him on today. Thanks, Laura. I'm very pleased to be here. My name is Christoph Leroy. I'm the founder of Sacred Hoop Healing Ways. I've practiced shamanic energy healing for over 15 years now, mainly in Mexico, but also in North America. And I've been driven and passionate about sharing these practices with others because it has such a profound effect on my life um, that this is something that I want others to be able to get acquainted with as well. So I'm always excited when we have the opportunity to come together, share, teach, and learn. And I'm looking forward to doing so with you in a few months' time. So the purpose of today's call is to talk about a couple of things. First is we are hosting a shamanic retreat weekend focused on healing our ancestral lineage, and it will be... September 30th through October 2nd. Looking forward to this retreat. It's not often that we have the opportunity to reflect on where we come from in the sense of our paternal lineage, our maternal lineage, and what do we carry forth from our family tree. So the reason we're focusing on ancestral healing is that we have the opportunity to discover what parts of ourselves are uniquely ours and what other parts of ourselves are in fact part of a larger family system. As we become aware of, for instance, our relationship to money, our relationship to love, the way we relate to meals and food, the way we tend to congregate socially, we'll realize that oftentimes a lot of that comes from how we learned to do these different activities in our families. The way we grew up, our environment accounts for a lot of it. Obviously genetics plays a large part in transmitting uh, different aspects of our lineage to us, but there's a different component too, which is we also inherit a series of beliefs and ways of being that are not necessarily conscious and yet are informed by our parents, by our grandparents and our forefathers before that. So the opportunity in this weekend is to come together and open up a space, a sacred space and time to reflect on certain parts of who we are and how we show up in the world, probably focusing on those areas that we might wanna change or evolve and asking the question, what parts of my personal ancestral lineage may account for what I'm living today? So there'll be two main components to the retreat. One is becoming aware, becoming more conscious of what are these dynamics going on within me, within my life, and then doing something about it. And that part will be through a number of shamanic energy healing practices, but first, we're going to also share some practices for how do you become aware of these patterns that live within us. So one of the techniques that we are going to share today that we will be working on during the retreat is a powerful healing technique and tool called earth paintings. So earth paintings is really about connecting with mother earth and setting intention about what you want to heal. So, so many native cultures have used mother nature to live in balance and harmony. So I, this is an example of, um, this is from the Diné tribe and they have different symbols and, um, so right here, it reflects the tree of life. So connected with the corn that grows in their area and provides 
food, food that nourishes them. This is the antelope that represents abundance and that there's always enough. So with the antelope, they used every piece of it, the meat, the skin, the horns, and what they couldn't eat, they would often give to local tribes. Um, and then this is Kokapelli, who basically, he didn't speak, he played the flute, and he was able to call in the rain and impact the weather so that their crops could flourish. So here is the medicine man that helped the local people with whatever they were struggling with. And he used the plants of mother nature to heal various ailments and just to create that balance and harmony in their lives. So this is interesting that you're showing this, Laura, because it's a symbolic representation of a world vision, a way to relate to nature, a way for these different beings to relate to each other. And yet, if you look at the picture, it, it's quite simple, but it evokes so much. And that's exactly what we engage in when we do an earth painting. So just like the sand painting that you showed us, when we create an earth painting, it is a way for us to begin a dialogue with mother nature and serves multiple purposes. So the way you might go about an earth painting would be literally picking up some sticks and stones and tracing the contours, say of a circle. And in, within that circle, you put other elements of nature that you find, uh, leaves and petals and maybe the grains or anything that you can find around it. And you create a representative image, a piece of art. And as we know, the language of art also evokes the symbolic, it's a mythic language. So by creating this earth painting, we give ourselves the opportunity to engage really with ourselves in a couple of different ways. On the one hand, having this creation, an earth painting allows us to see ourselves. It serves as a mirror, a symbolic mirror of whatever might be going on right now in our lives. And because the language is symbolic, it helps evoke what the soul is yearning for, what the soul is wanting to express that is usually expressed in ways that go beyond words, hence the value of art. An earth painting also serves as a container for our personal energy, because we might also be imbuing it with our intentions and our desires and our hopes and so it becomes a place where all of our energy is concentrated in one place. And finally, it also serves as a mechanism or as a portal for a dialogue, an active dialogue with the elements of mother nature. And in that dialogue, by asking certain questions and by reflecting and by being attentive to what we perceive, we may obtain a lot of wisdom, insights, intuition. So by creating an earth painting, as you can see, it really invites a moment of self-reflection in a way that we may not be used to, yet is powerful and simple. So I have most of my clients do earth paintings after a session. And it is so powerful because first of all, you're in nature, you're working in with nature, which can be so grounding. And then setting the intention about whatever it is that you want to heal and really calling upon mother nature to, it's almost like you are surrendering what needs to be healed. You're becoming vulnerable, setting the intention, and then you're allowing mother nature to do its work um, through, through alchemy, right. And whether, whether we're talking about animals. So some of my clients use fruit, you know, not like a bag of Cheetos, like that food like that, but you know, an apple or an orange, and they use that to create their earth painting. And sometimes the animals will 
help shift the mandala or rain or wind or the sun or the natural earth mulching can help shift that earth painting. And what's really beautiful is once it shifts, you can come back to it and it will mirror something new back to you, something different. And again, it's an invitation for contemplation. And by asking again some questions of what does it feel like to me now? What do I see in this painting in this moment? How does it resonate with me? Is there a new perspective that maybe emerges from how the elements within the painting are now arranged? And that can bring up new metaphors. It can suggest the opening of new possibilities, perhaps a new, even a new pathway or a new aspect that you can think about who you are right then in that present moment. Right. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll usually tell my clients to leave it out there for three to seven days, typically. And they'll ask, well, once I do it, what do I need to do? And I, I leave it up to them. I'm like, well, you could check on it every day, or you could wait that time period and look at it after whatever needs to be shifted has shifted. And it becomes not just a shift energetically, but when you see the physical transformation with your eyes of what it looked like before. So I always have my clients take a picture of the first one that they did and then take a picture after to see how it has moved and shifted. So you want to talk a little bit about that and what's happening more from a shamanic perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Well, consider the the picture they're they're taking of the mandala when they first created this earth painting that they've just created with elements of nature that is a snapshot it's a mirror into what their energy is like right then and there then if that someone who's working with you as a client they may go through an energetic experience and a shift through different modalities that you may use with them and maybe a several days later, they'll come back. And in the meantime, as you suggested, the wind will have done its work. Maybe the rain or the sunshine will have added an element of transformation. Perhaps there will have been some visitors, one animal or several coming to nibble at some of the different elements there. And needless to say, so as time goes by, that painting has shifted. And so when they come back and they see it, the visual cue will likely stimulate a, a new sense of meaning. What do I see in it now? And for some people that have different senses that are stronger, like the sense of smell or that are more tactile, they may want to literally get down on hands and knees and feel their way through the painting or even come really up close and get a, get a felt sense for it. And that will evoke different experience in the moment and even if we can't quite put words to it we can intuit that something has changed and remember it's a mirror so what what does this new representation stand for what is it what do i feel about myself right now and th then maybe some words will come so shamanically we can say that there's a shift in perspective that's occurring and it may even be indicative of a new shift in a mindset that will unfold over time. But at the very least, likely the, the client will come away with a sense of a new perspective, a new lens through which to see the world, the issue they worked on, or to see themselves. And what I've noticed, even when I've done it personally, is sometimes I will go back after three days and I don't feel like it's quite done yet, but I want to move certain pieces around or certain of the elements to a new location, which again is representative that something is shifting and moving, but maybe it needs to sit for a couple of more days. Yeah. And sometimes it's the metaphor of the layers of the onion and 
you come back to Mandala three days later and there's been several layers peeled away, but now something new has emerged that might need to be attended to or may require several more days for nature to work its way through it. Yeah, and there's something so powerful um, uh, consciously about setting an intention, putting it, making the earth painting on Mother Earth, and then almost stepping away from whatever it is that is ailing you physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, right? It's like we, we put that aside and we can move on to the next thing, at least temporarily, so that this, this issue is not consuming us so much. And this is where the practice of creating an earth painting um, converges with different spiritual traditions where we might make an offering or we might offer a prayer and then we release the outcome. We trust the universe or a higher power or God to work on our behalf, but we don't tell him. We don't tell him how to, right? We right. surrender that to right. something greater than ourselves. Right. And, and then at the end, um, you can write a story about just a little three to five sentences of what's coming up for you. And there's a lot of metaphors in that. Um, and then you really, you, you let everything return to nature, right? Yeah. So there's a sense of coming to completion. There'll be a moment where you feel that the earth painting as it currently is feels complete it feels in its in and of itself it feels in harmony and in balance and is thus a accurate representation of how I feel right now and I'm at peace with that there's a mm -hmm. sense of acceptance and then indeed it's uh it's it's time to bring the process and the dialogue with nature to completion and one way of doing so is as you suggest Laura is releasing the mandala, which would mean undoing the circle or the contours we traced and returning all of the elements we use to decorate the painting back to nature. And literally nothing is left. It's as if no one had come through. And there's something very potent in that act of releasing back to nature uh, and close, bringing to closure that conversation. Yeah. And again, kind of an end result, what people will experience after doing something like this is maybe they have a big problem or some situation that they're struggling with. And maybe this has allowed them to see it for, with a new lens or a different perspective, or maybe they're feeling a little bit lighter about it, less anxious about something. And, and it's subtle. It's, it's it's just a very subtle process. It, it's subtle yet powerful. Um, indeed, people feel lighter um, when you do uh, this kind of a practice and let it unfold over a few days. A lot of emotions get released. Yes. Literally a space for us to unburden ourselves. Uh, and it happens through this process this alchemy that happens with the elements of nature and the earth painting so one feels lighter one feels more at peace and oftentimes there's a greater sense of clarity and meaning well thank you so much for joining us today we are so excited to be hosting our retreat in September and early October, our ancestral healing retreat. This is just one of the amazing tools that we will be using and sharing during that weekend, along with a host of other things. Any last words, Christoph? Well, yes, thank you. I think that um, we should give our viewers a snapshot of what a mandala can look like. And you have several out there on your wall behind you. I do. I have a whole wall of mandalas. Um, and we'll actually add some to this video for everybody so they can see some live pictures and examples of this powerful healing tool.
Absolutely. And we invite all of you to come and uh, sign up for the retreat. It's from September 30th until October 7th, 7th, or 2nd in Wakefield, Massachusetts at the Holistic yeah. Life Community Center. Yes. And uh, find out more online or yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, on holisticlifecommunity.com slash events. And so we have a whole events tab and click on that weekend of September 30th and you can sign up right there. Thank you so much. Thank you.